What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Jump. And man, these streets been going crazy. Atlanta, Minneapolis, Oakland, my beloved city of Sacramento, Los Angeles. I mean, man, you know, it's a sad thing, right? And as much as um, I understand that racism is alive and well in America and you know that blacks don't always get a fair shake, it's the only country that I, I, I know, right? Um, and I'm, I'm spending some time, I'm getting acclimated to Uganda, and obviously I've been in Poland for some time, but you know, it, it's just sad to see that some of the things that as a little boy coming up and um, noticing about the society, and as technology has changed, some things have remained the same when it comes to black people's position in the United States. And, you know, the United States is one of the few places <clears throat> where you can be a victim and still be considered the perpetrator. And I want all black men who are listening under the sound of my voice, if you think that equality is alive and well, if you think that, you know, we are viewed the same, I, I want you to really look at this, right? I, I want to talk about the whole George Floyd situation in this autopsy. Now the autopsy reports came back and said um, that this death did not happen because of you know asphyxiation, right? Um, there are other autopsies, right, that says that uh, compression to his neck and back led to a lack of blood flow to the brain. So. You have people out here. Shout out to my man, Anthony Brian Ogan, um, Blo Blogan, who, who had a really good video on this. And um, he was saying that if asphyxiation isn't the reason why George Floyd died, now we're talking about his under um, other healthcare issues. He was suffering from heart disease, he had some problems with high blood pressure and um, underlying health issues. You know, he could have been on certain drugs. He did look a little bit, you know, maybe his uh, equilibrium was a little off. That's what killed him, right? And then on the other hand, while you have people like ABL who were, you know, basically saying that the officer um, was trained on how to put those holds on George Floyd, the knee to the back that was relevant to the case. You then have other people who are bringing up the, his past, all right? In the past is <clears throat> George Floyd had a criminal record. George Floyd was in adult movies. And people are bringing up this situation to throw this whole situation off from the fact that George Floyd died in police custody. That's, that's the issue we're talking about today. And I want black men to understand this. If you happen to be a victim in any situation, there are people who are not black that will go back to your past and they will say stuff like this. Think music! Well, you know, in 1984, when he was three years old, uh, the record is that he stole a honey bun out of a store and put it in his jacket, although he didn't know what he was doing. So we need to also understand that he is a thief. So he been stealing honey buns since 84. This is what you're gonna get. <clears throat> People are gonna look. This is not even the prosecution doing this or the defense or anybody. You have people who are going to look back into your past and bring it up as if that's the reason why you died. Now, George Floyd, in the videos that we saw, I'm sorry, man, I try to be fair. I didn't see him resisting any arrest. 
I mean, it looked like it was a little bit of a tussle trying to get him out of the car. I mean, he was like, a, you know, a guy that's six foot six. But I just didn't see that on his end, right? I just didn't. And now you have people trying to bring up that, okay, he didn't die of, a, of, a, of asphyxiation or he wasn't strangled. And his past is that he was in adult movies. His past, he has a criminal charge. One stint, he spent five years. But the fact of the matter is this, he died in police custody. And the question is, if the, if the officer wouldn't have put his knee on his neck, would he be alive today? Or does that have anything to do with why he died? The answer is resounding yes, right? And a lot of people out here always want to give the benefit of the doubt to the police or always want to give the benefit of the doubt because, oh, you know, he wasn't as successful as you would want him to be, yet he's out there cashing fake checks or he has a problem, he's trying to give a phony $20 bill, so he deserves it. So let's find any way out that we can not give him the benefit of the doubt. But we're not talking about how you personally feel. We're talking about the fact that if the officer wouldn't have put his knee on his neck for eight minutes, would he be alive today? Because he was alive when they put him out the car. He was alive and well. If he was doing a phony check at the time at the place or a phony $20 bill, he was alive and well. He wasn't dead then. Why all of a sudden when he wasn't dead before he was in your custody, when he come out of your custody, all of a sudden he's dead. Because if you didn't necessarily kill him, you played a role which sped up one of the underlying conditions to kill him. And I want all black men to understand this because no matter what you do, they're going to come and look for a reason. Some people that this is why you did. You deserve this. And you guys got to understand this. This is how they look at our people, our group of men. You know, we are always thinking that the times are different, you know, because we, we got access to white women. Now we can date interracially. Oh, they like us. They accept us as black men. They want to have our babies and all of this. But at the same time, brother, this is what they're doing. This is what they're doing. You always got to watch what you do, bro. Because at any given time, anything that you've done, and everybody got the right to make mistakes in their life. You could have paid your debt to society. Somebody is going to find a way as to vilify or, or to vilify you. And they vilifying a guy who, you know, I mean, obviously if he was doing something wrong that day, he should have got arrested, but he didn't deserve a knee from what I saw. And black men got to wake up. We may have passports and citizenship in the country, but we know that our citizenship is not necessarily equal. We got blacks in our community that don't like us. That are looking to give another group of people the reason why we should be we should have perished. This is the reason why black men have to start to do for self. I keep telling you, we can't depend on uh, the white community to help us out. We cannot depend on the Asian community to help us out. We must depend on one another because we got to solve this problem, right? Because there are, some people are always going to look for a reason to give you a death sentence when you don't deserve it. Judging you by your past. Let me tell you this, right? This is this has helped me understand one thing. I used to be the kind of black person that judge other black people by their past. I don't do that anymore. If a brother went to jail, a brother doing something, I, I'm looking to say, you know what? Society looks at him like that. I'm not going to look at him like that. 
I'm not going to look at George Floyd as a repeat criminal, right? Because we have a lot of brothers that come out of jail or make a mistake and change their life, and they have to go they have to go around being looked at as a criminal all their life, haven't done anything in years. We as black men got to start providing opportunities for our brothers that have been through the system and stop looking at them as the white man looks at them. We can't look at them through the same lens, right? We have to be willing to give our people a chance. A lot of brothers that have done something in, in jail, went, became truckers, went and got in tech, went and doing their thing now. And you know what they pay their debt to society? Let's work with our black men that are doing something in life. Because how can we expect them not to bring those things up on us when we look at our each other as that same way? So I want you brothers to hopefully learn something from this. I appreciate all you brothers. Thank you for uh, supporting the show. Subscribe at the bell. Go to the first comment. Check out my Black Man at Perfect t-shirts. Go to the Patreon. Check me out there. And guys, I really appreciate you for all that you do. As you know, the buffoon remains at an all-time high. I'm out.